you can have a cocoa grower in Ghana. You can have a tropical mango grower in Mexico, or, or you can have a farmer in the middle of the northern plains in the U.S., and they will all have a smartphone in their pocket. And they can, they can all pick up that smartphone and make a, a snapshot of or, or a video clip of what they are experiencing in that particular moment. They can tell us a story. This is Evolve CPG, a community of purpose-driven brand leaders who not only believe in better, but actively pursue it. Better products, better brands, better leadership for a better world. I'm your host, Gage Mitchell, and today we're speaking with Pablo Munoz Ledo, co-founder and CEO of Into, a new platform for telling better brand and producer stories. I am Pablo Munoz Ledo. I am originally from Mexico City, and I relocated in the Bay Area, uh, San Francisco, uh, nine years ago, actually. And uh, r the reason for coming here is starting up a company, starting up a platform that will do digital story sharing for purpose-driven producers and brands, connecting them basically connecting them to their consumers and their customers and establishing that link in a very immediate way. And yeah, that's, uh, that's what I've been doing for the past few years. And now we are at the moment where the platform is actually taking off. Um, very excited, exhausted, and with a lot of hope. <laughs> well, I guess that's a good place to be. It'd be nice to have some rest too, but it's good to be in that good, good type of exhausted where action is happening. And thanks for joining us. I know when we um, initially talked, I felt like you had a pretty interesting story of how you got into the um, producer storytelling um, side of things by kind of dipping into farming, just wanting to learn how to grow food and then getting into organic. Can you tell the listeners a little bit more about your background and how you got into food in the first place? Yes, uh, sure. Um, I think my life has been um, kind of sequence of chapters that have been very different from one another. It's not been a really consistent linear uh, career. Uh, I started up as an educational psychologist and with uh, my, my area of, of um, research and was create, creative development. And that uh, eventually I started a creative workshop which became an integrated marketing agency in Mexico City in the 90s. And so that was my my first chapter as an educator and then um, as an entrepreneur in the marketing communications. And uh, I, I think at that point, I, I worked with really interesting companies. None of them were necessarily purpose-driven companies. And we became more, if you want, more of a tech um, a lot of our clients were tech companies that had um, maybe some consumer electronics and technology, um, like companies like Microsoft, for example. And I, uh, we ended up being a digital marketing company. So that really connected me to communications and really understanding markets, understanding consumers, understanding, you know, what's in people's minds and hearts and at that point, um, with this knowledge, creating communications for, for companies, for mo mostly large companies, mo mostly global large companies. And um, at that point in my life, I, had, I was uh, recently married in my first marriage. So uh, we decided to just leave the, leave the city and, and start living in a farm close to the city. And I commuted every day to my, to my job but I started living in that farm. And that was, that was it. That was the experience that actually changed everything for me. Um, living in the farm, the project was not a commercial project, it was more a personal project, trying to grow as much food as we could of, you know, of what the family supply. Uh, my first daughter was born at that point. So she was born in a farm. And, um, and I understood a lot of things about 
life, I, I got um, I, the first thing that really hit me was how important growing food is, how important farming is. And the farmers that were my, my neighbors back there um, were not, they were small health um, ejidos, which is a, an officially a, a very small piece of land that is distributed among um, the population in small towns. And that, um, so small farmers in Mexico have a very having a very difficult time marketing the products. And um, that was the reality. I, I, I really was suddenly, you know, I found myself in the middle of this very different reality. And understanding it, I thought there was a lot to be done in terms of how we grow food, how farmers can have better access to markets, organize their production. And very soon, very soon after this project started, we met an organic farmer. She told us how she did things, and we thought it made absolute sense, everything we hear. That, uh, the way you treat the land, um, what you use in the farm, her philosophy, she was a, a like a really deep ecologist. And so we, we loved this and we started farming that way. And we started even uh, kind of leading the way and farmers that were conventional that are were around us uh, were liking the idea and they, they started farming like this. So, you know, at, at some point as a marketer to just say, okay, now there is a big marketing problem here. The, the way that farmers connect to, to the markets is very, very intermediated. Um, the way those organic farmers um, that I met, that I started, you know, being friends with in Mexico, even the larger organic farmers, they all had some sort of marketing problem. Uh, so I decided at some point to start a company where I combined my marketing experience with my new life and I started Aires de Campo, which is to this day is the largest uh, organic label in Mexico. I, I, was, I founded a company and was head of the company for the first six years of its life. And, um, and that was that, that was it. I, the, my, my company from, from the very start was a storytelling experience. We used to tell everyone where things came from, how farmers worked, what their lives were like. And in, in particular, when you have large cooperatives or indigenous farmers and consumers could actually know who they were affecting or benefiting with their purchase decisions, that was amazing. I, I, I really discovered that this direct connection had a lot of power. And so we did that. And in the years following this experience, I, I started and headed a nonprofit organization to do right that. But it was a big consultancy for farmers that had purpose-driven projects, not only organic, uh, also some of the incipient, uh, they weren't called regenerative back then. They were holistic management. There were other terms for the same thing uh, than sustainable fish. Uh, a lot of these different projects I had to do with, and um, it was amazing to see how the right project has the ability to reignite communities, make people want to stay. Uh, farmers in Mexico who were parts of these projects were very busy growing something that had a lot of value in the local and international market. They, they it, they really weren't thinking about leaving the land or coming to the U.S. as as farm workers or as immigrants. Um, that 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 was a really new experience for me. Had seeing how everything depended on having the you know the right connection, ecosystem, farmers, and then consumers supporting that. So that's it. At some point, I thought years after that, I thought this should be done in a much larger scale, like a global scale. And this is not a one-on-one -on -one 
project. I mean, we could do that, but then we would spend our lives and, and hopefully help a thousand farmers. But if we create a platform, a cloud platform, and remembering my days as a digital marketer, understanding technologies that were available, if we did this at a very large scale and created more the medium for farmers to reach consumers and vice versa, this could have a, a really big impact. And that's how we actually decided to start this, uh, this adventure. Nice. I love when careers combine both like your technical skills background or your interests or, or you know, profession in one field with some other field that you've become passionate about and maybe grown some expertise in. And I think that's when, when magic happens is when you, when you're able to align multiple things that you're passionate about together and then provide just such a unique offering that other people wouldn't be able to do. So that's cool. Uh, it's fun hearing that. There are connections. I mean, there are connections between all these things. Sometimes, well, if we were talking to a Buddhist, they will tell us everything. We are all one. <laughs> and there's no separation. Yeah. But from a more, you know, um, practical point, I guess creative uh, humans need to have creative responses to everything that we see. Caring and, um, yeah, responses of love and caring. And you need to do it in a creative way. Uh, if you ask me, thinking that today your food is related to climate and you could actually eat climate smart food is a creative idea yeah and the ways that we are returning to uh protect the soil and and all of these ideas are going back to the basis but at the same time are very revolutionary we are starting to it's like looking looking at ourselves looking with this interior interior sort of look at our hearts or um our center seems to be at the same time the a, a very ancient philosophy that has been among humans forever but now it seems like a very refreshing um uh, comeback i and i'm talking about post covid society seems so um, activated towards everything that is reconnecting and rethinking. Absolutely. Yeah, I do love how the usually what's best for the most people and the planet happens to also be going back to doing things the way we were doing it before we mucked it all up. <laughs> so, so while it seems exciting and new, like all this regenerative organic ag agriculture movement, it's also just taking a few steps back and realizing that we kind of had it right in the beginning and <laughs> we should just do it the right way instead of um, trying to get all creative and, you know, do it in harmony with nature. So that's, that's always funny when people think that it's this new shiny thing. Great. Um, so that's a um, really powerful story, but tell us a little bit more about Into now and um, what you're doing with, with that company. So Into is a story sharing platform and uh, it's a communication platform. So it connects to ends. At, at one end, you have the storyteller and at the other end, you have the story viewer. And then those roles can actually interchange and become a more two-way thing. But basically, when you have a brand or a producer that has a purpose-driven story to share and... Uh, let us know, and, and someone who, who would like to let us know how people and planet are treated in the way any, any, actually any good or service is produced. The fact that we are starting by food, it's just because of my, maybe my background, and because food is probably one of the most powerful connections to, between people and planet. Um, so it's mostly food, but there's not only that. And so these stories are told in a, in a digital canvas that combines all sorts of rich digital media. That is images, video, audio, maps, or 
like geographic information, um, um, animations, everything can be combined in one single story. And the story viewer would just have to swipe through different, we call them cards. It's a card navigation sort of thing. You navigate with your thumb in a smartphone, and then you can understand the story in a very simple, very accessible way. So the tools for creating those stories and for um, organizing the people and the teams that normally get together to create stories uh, was very carefully designed based on how both individuals or companies um, handle these things. So it's a wide range of solutions that is helpful for the single farmer or the you know couple of farmers that are working and they take care of the farm, their communications and their social media and everything at the same time. So Intu um, has a basic format that is very easy to use and can be good for uh, individual farmers. And it's also good and it also has uh, features and, and um, tools for much larger groups creating stories in a networked sort of way. So um, that is about how we create those stories. Then you have the story, you have to distribute your story. How, how do you access, how, how do people access your story? And that's, that's one of our kind of more distinctive features is that the stories we create go with your product. So we use image recognition, smart uh, smartphone technology, smart, smart smartphone applications for everybody, for people to be really able to get your story directly from just taking a snapshot of your product. So of your product or, or for that case, for any trigger image. So many times and most recently we've been experiencing with just posters or postcards or whatever visual that you know can give you a story and therefore you have the ability to connect consumers with the story not only in a sort of shelf retail situation or when they have the product in their hands but also when they are having lunch at college and there's some really interesting food service company or or farm to school uh, project back there and then you connect at that point with the farmer who grew the lettuce that you're having in your salad and that's not going to be necessarily image recognition of the product but maybe a visual or postcard something that they will be using so the the stories are stories are distributed in the physical world in a very immediate way and we wanted to do that. We wanted to use images to bring stories and so that you could be connected anywhere, anytime with a story of something. Um, the, the, it completes what people are doing at right now. Our most companies are taking um, advantage of is social media, which is amazing. The, the way you can actually share and um, uh, propagate all all of disseminate your stories through social media and then if you are in a social media mode uh with your phone or your computer and people are you're just in that mood and in that space that's perfect if you are not in that space and you are eating or buying or just interacting with your food in any context then uh then into is a very useful tool because you don't have to be in social media you you can just have this intimate relationship with the story at any point and in a very ubiquitous way so that's that's how we distribute stories we 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 really have like this digital physical thing so uh, we we have the story viewing through smartphones for the physical world and in the digital world we created a widget that can be embedded with wherever your product is shown. So your product, your story goes with your product and that widget is embeddable. So it's really where your product goes, you click on something, you have the story in a transparent window on top of whatever website or e-commerce site, and then you just close that. So again, the same experience 
only in the digital, digital realm. Um, after that, after people are just looking at your story, viewing your story, um, then we, we do a lot of very profound analytics with, with that. We, you know, when people are browsing um, websites or e-commerce sites, there's a lot of opportunity to know what interests them. And you have heat maps and all sorts of technologies, analytics, basically. When you are sharing digital stories, there is a even deeper pattern of how people view your stories. So if you create a five card stories with a video and a map and the face of a farmer, or maybe the image of a lettuce or a fruit or an animal or whatever you're sharing, then you can tell how much time did people spend in each card. Uh, you can tell at what, at what point exactly people decided to share that story. And there's a lot of different indicators that let you know how your stories are being viewed. And there's, there's like a really shift in the number of data points that you can use to understand how people are interacting with your stories, which uh, has two big advantages, both for the storyteller becoming a better storyteller, really learning to connect and using, you know, using deep learning and technologies like AI, not really to substitute human intelligence or human labor, but merely to amplify the experience in this case, or your knowledge in this case. And also from the consumer point of view, uh, instead of, you know, I, I think that mindset of digital companies post COVID and uh, after all the, you know, very critical point in which we understood how social media can also become a very manipulative uh, tool in, in, in certain cases. I think we come to the era of the data commons where the data should be clearly shared with you and with everybody else. Uh, if I know more about you and your preferences, it's just because I'd like to be a digital assistant to you and bring you more things to your space that otherwise maybe it would have been hard to find them. Uh, if I can give you that service, if I'm, I'm using the data to actually be of better service to you, not really to manipulate or sell your information. I think that's a very valid way to use um, every every tool that we have available right now, um, and namely artificial intelligence. So, yeah, we want to do that. We want to amplify analytics in a, with intelligence and they really understand what's in people's hearts. How can we help that connection? between consumers' hearts and uh, farmers and producers and all sorts of food uh, uh, producers' hands and hearts as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a very needed synapse. We just want to create the medium for that to happen. That's beautiful. I love how it's so multi-layered. <laughs> you can have people just take a image or snap a picture of a package on a shelf and get the stories they can just discover it in their social media or they can find it on a product page of a website. I just love that it can, the stories can go wherever the product is or wherever the experience is, or even like you said, at a restaurant or a retail store, you could have a little table tent sign or something that just says, take a picture of this and hear the story of the person who wove this sweater for you or, or whatever story it is, you know? So that's really powerful. And the fact that you've got so much data kind of built into it is great you know, for brands to, like you said, learn how to tell better stories, whether it's even like the length of the story or in which order the cards should appear, but just being able to make sure that the important parts of the story are coming through. Um, and I'm especially, you know, after watching The Social Dilemma a little while ago, I don't know if you've seen that show. I can't remember if it's on Netflix or something, but it's all about how some of the bigger social media companies use all these algorithms to just feed you 
addicting content to keep you on their platform longer. So it ends up being sort of a negative thing, but to put that power in the hands of people who actually care about your health and well being <laughs> sounds like it would be a great like twist on that. And uh, so you being able to share that data and help better for the world brands who actually want to improve lives instead of just suck your attention is great. Absolutely agree with you. I guess uh, the great dilemma is how, what, what, what kind of driver are you, you want to use to move people into and, and people's emotions, fear or love are basically the two potential drivers. So fear is very moving, is very powerful and you can actually handle and manipulate fear and you can actually feed that wolf, right? <laughs> the, the, the fear and, and, and it's very negative. And, um, all, if, if you are driven by fear, um, it's most likely your actions won't be loving actions and caring actions, but mostly aggressive reactions to things. So, and I think we had had enough of that in recent years. And I think as a society, last year was not only COVID's year and pandemic and, and not, not, not only that, but also the year where we profoundly questioned our philosophy or our positions as a society towards things like racism, inclusion, and uh, coexistence. I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm all about the driver of love. When you see things that are done in ways that are respectful to humans and nature, and you just feel that connection, that love connection to say uh, an image of a farmer that is protecting the salmon in the creeks that run through their farms or the soil. And when you see all these uh, indigenous communities or global south communities everywhere that are thriving because of the way they are farming and the way they are connecting with, with markets that are supporting what they produce. And all of these positive feedback loops, which are basically the, the tissue, the very essential tissue of life, when you can make them evident, there is an immediate connection to that. I've seen that in the in the short in the short history of Intu, we've seen those stories how powerful they are, and the the moment you make them evident. So I think, yeah, that's that's basically what we are experiencing in terms of, yes. you know, and we see that we see that we see that as a, I we don't really talk about consumer education. I know that um, it's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that we think of the same thing from a slightly different perspective, and we call that uh, discovery journeys. So more that sometimes educating consumers has a little bit, or in my view, it has this little slightly arrogant position where I know you ignore, I'm going to teach you, or I'm going to educate you. I'd rather think I am amazed, surprised, and compared completely energized by this idea that I just discovered, call it regenerative uh, agriculture, or, you know, call it sustainable fishing, or, and um, I'd like to in invite you to this discovery journey. I uh, just be a part of it. I'm sure that you will be amazed and surprised and in, in a state of permanent, oh, as I am when you discover these things. So into stories are more about offering, offering you like these breadcrumbs that will lead you to deeper and larger concepts where you, where there are incredible, incredible uh, sources of amazing stories. And everyone will be a different one, even if we're all talking about the same thing. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I remember in a previous conversation, you mentioned kind of the power of or importance of uh, first voice storytelling. And I thought that was really compelling, I think largely because a lot of better for the world brands, especially if they have uh, 
fair trade certification. They want to tell those stories of their farmers. Sometimes maybe they'll get some cool videos of showing the farmers and whatever, but often the, the narrator voice isn't the farmer voice or often um, maybe it's just a still image, whether it's on their package or in their social media and it has a quote over it and, and you're kind of having to think through your own voice in those cases, right? But to, to actually hear the farmer in their own voice or the producer or the whomever in their own voice telling their story, it has just a whole different weight to it. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, I mean, yeah, th that's a great, great subject and it's fundamental. First voice is the opportunity that we have now. Imagine that we are, most of us, the the penetration of smartphones in uh, poor countries is amazing. I experienced that in Mexico. I was, uh, you know, visiting rural areas everywhere, and I saw how ubiquitous the smartphone is. And wherever there is a cell, and and then the cell um, and data, cell data coverage is also big because many of these countries, uh, for example, my my uh, motherland, didn't never never reach the what they call teledensity. So landlines were never that that good, and uh, at some point, um, landlines per per you know per population that was a very very low density. So when the cell um, technology uh, became more and more and more common, then coverage of all telecommunications was made by, by cell phones. So, which brings us to a moment where you can have a cocoa grower in Ghana, you can have a tropical mango grower in Mexico, or, or you can have a farmer in the middle of the northern plains in the U.S., and they will all have a smartphone in their pocket. And they can they can all pick up that smartphone and make a, a snapshot of or or a video clip of what they are experiencing in that particular moment. They can tell us a story. So we created in into this feature called um, story source. So when you as a storyteller at any point can invite anyone with a smartphone as long as you have their, their email address to be a storyteller for your story. What happens then is that they get this invitation, they click uh, on a link, they download the Story Source app, which is a part of our platform, and their device becomes a blockchain verified source of media for your story. So you can even know that that's exactly the, those images or video clips that you're receiving come directly from who you invited and no one else, uh, bringing legitimacy and authenticity to your. And then by sort of thinking of stories that are based on first voices, you are connecting, you as a brand are creating this amazing forum where you are connecting growers and, and farmers and ranchers in the field with consumers, where actually eventually and ultimately eating what they produce. And this I, I, amazing loop is now possible. So we want to make as much as possible with, with first voice. Um, I can think of a very, in, between the stories that are shared in Into, wholesome sweeteners have an amazing story about their, um, some of their sources of uh, organic sugar in, in Paraguay and I love the way they did that because the story starts with the farmer talking to the camera and describing his day and he's even speaking in this uh, I speak Spanish and I had trouble because that's a that's a dialect that's half um, an indigenous uh, uh, tongue and then Spanish and he's talking in his dialect and uh, talking about him, his life, he's a grandfather, how proud he is of his grandson, all of that and first voice description of the life of a farmer who's, you know, sugar probably is in my coffee or, and then that, 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 that sort of connection, I think 
that's exactly what you you are invited to do. That's beautiful. And actually, I know you've got a handful of pretty well-known brands already using the platform. So what are you finding um, that's kind of working best for those brands right now? Are they doing more of the um, multi-cards with some video and some still images and maps and different things? Or is it like what's performing best and um, where are you finding people engaging with it most through social media, on websites, on shelf? Well, um, I can tell you, I'll, I can tell you more about the first question about the latter. We'll see because we are about to, to to release the stories to launch. So we have had a period of of time, and it's now a couple of year for a couple of years. Uh, companies have been invited to be a part of what we call Pioneer Brand Program. And the Pioneer Brand Program is actually a very easy way to join the platform. There's no immediate financial commitments or anything. And we invite brands to tell their stories through the platform. And um, we've had an amazing response from brands. I I think the medium is interesting and um, innovative enough to... Now, of course, the collection of stories that we have had um, is now available, and you can you can take a look at that at a website that's called One Hundred Stories, and the actual URL is just that one hundred one zero zero story dot es, and if you go there, you will see what I'm talking about. The different brands are are telling their first few stories, and then when um, we are reaching a really interesting volume of con- initial content, and by releasing it at the same time, that's gonna that's gonna be uh, an interesting uh, moment because all of these brands will be pushing their stories at the same time. So we don't really know what will be the the context of use that will be predominantly, you know, um, driving into growth, but. One thing I can tell you about the stories that that your first question about, yeah, there's been different approaches to story, the creation of stories. And we've seen that, you know, at least in this um, in this experimental stage that we are with, there's been consumer insights. There's been a lot of people experiencing the stories. And we think that shorter stories work better than longer stories than into canvas has gives you eight digital cards to create story top of eight but may, maybe some of the greatest stories have just four of them they just show you a map show you a video and maybe just one very very strong image little text and those stories are highly digestible and bite size so i think what they do is they are very rewarding in a very short space you to take a look at the story watch a very short video maybe one of the pictures is particularly emotionally charged and then you get this synapse or aha moment or very satisfactory connection with something that really fills your heart and then it ends and it leaves you hungry for the next you know it's it's more like that so when companies are using a tool like into they should think of breaking down their purpose or their big ideas into small bite-sized different pieces and here's my sort of educator background <laughs> working that's called constructivism that's that you deconstruct your concept as a company and then when you offer the little pieces and they are all interesting and flavorful and interesting to see you will have your customers and your fans looking at those. And when you've seen two or three and you start kind of reconstructing your brand, in my own interpretation of your brand, my own conclusions of the little fragments that you were offering me, then then it's much better. The, the knowledge I construct is long term. I'm not memorizing anything. Secondly, there's a huge, there's a very big emotional bond with everything that I'm learning from you. So I want to learn more just because I love what you're doing. And I think that's the kind of engagement we want. That's the kind of engagement that drives long-term loyalty, 
lifetime value for brands connecting this way. Beautiful. Do you envision uh, longer term, and I know you're just kind of getting rolling like you mentioned, but do you envision brands maybe making a story for each or a, a set of cards um, for each product or maybe more of like a one universal story for the brand or both? <laughs> I guess there, actually there's both. And I guess the, the universal story for the brand, that's the role of the website. And that, that's, there are other tools that do that much better. And I think our realm and our ability is to create the breadcrumbs and the bite-sized stories that will, it, and, it, and it's, all, it's not either or, it's all integrated. It is all hologram, it's a part of the same thing. So we're just different offering fragments of something, but then you, you have this ability that you check one story, you love it, you love the farmer, you get more stories from the farmer. So we will facilitate the process of reconstruction of your brand. It's not like we are just uh, working with isolated pieces that will not have an impact. We do provide the way to really integrate the whole, uh, especially when some, someone really likes the story or likes what you're doing. Um, people tend to be committed to very, very specific things in their hearts. So you can think of equality that's perfect i think it's in our minds in our hearts everybody's but some people see that in a way of women or girl empowerment in uh in 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 the world or so there it comes to very specific commitments so what we see in the future is companies could use into to create uh, not only this micro very granular handling of their stories but also very granular handling of people's commitments or engagement so if you want to actually help with the projects that um, our supply community is doing then you could you could have that connection not only with the product but also with the people who are behind the product and uh, and i think that's uh that could that would that could be a very very powerful micro networking of um engagement yeah that sounds exciting yeah so you do you envision for kind of like a call to action or interactivity that there would be multiple options for brands to leave a consumer with um on different stories so like maybe they're telling a story about some project they're doing with their producers in a country where they're trying to raise some money to build a new school or something like that. And at the end, it could say, hey, and if you want to contribute, either share the story or, you know, donate a dollar, you know, whatever, something like that to help the campaign versus, you know, click here to buy the product or, you know, there could be so many different actions that consumers could take at the end of seeing a story. Absolutely. That's exactly the path that we want to follow. Exactly. And basically, our use of blockchain in this in this um, at this moment is limited to just sort of authenticating the story sources, but we are exploring in the future what other things we could do now the, having a, a strong blockchain foundation, and one of them is that like the micro micro engagement with particular projects, so brands could. You love something about the brand, about one of their stories. They could then display to you all the all the projects that I have that they have in that particular regard, and then you could even choose to help one of the, all, one of them. And it could be um, it could be like that. It could be like a d d direct um, uh, sort of direct help, or it could be by sharing your story. That that's also like smart contracts of of uh, you know blockchain technology could help every every time a story shared a hundred times there's a dollar going from one point to another uh, so there's all sorts of exciting potential that's one thing that we have discovered with into and it's exciting is wow having a digital canvas with a you know few possible combinations has led to thousands of ways of, of interpreting or to really using it and uh, creating, creating conversations 
some brands are thinking about using the story source to create like forums. So the product would be like you you scan a product and you get uh, a different voices of 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 people like you that are talking about something and. So there's like an infinite way of combinations that you could use. And we will continue to improve and to evolve the ways stories are, are told. Right now we have all, all these uh, resources that I told you, but we are already exploring more uh, immersive video, things that will, um, you know, just complete the, the canvas or give you more colors if you want in your palette so that your rich media becomes richer and richer. And uh, yeah, I think there's no end to what can happen in terms of joining the dots and connecting distant ends. Yeah, the more we talk about it, the more excited I get because the, the feature where you could take a picture of a product on a shelf and hear the stories, I could definitely see a consumer taking that picture, flipping through a couple of tiles and then having a coupon pop up that if they click that, they get a instant digital coupon to like buy that product and, and try it out. Or another thought that was popping through my head is a fair world, fair world project that does a lot of um, advocacy campaigns around uh, fair trade policies. They do a lot of uh, petitions and, and different things like that, that I could totally see them using some of these story platforms to tell a little bit of that first voice story about why this is important and then have a card that like gets them to sign up for the petition or or share the story or something. So there's just so many different ways that I could see brands using. Absolutely it. right. And those brands exist. And fortunately, uh, we are they are already a part of our Pioneer Brands program. So you have brands like Rebel that, you know, the, the project that is in the background of what they do, uh, not for sale, is an amazing, amazing quest. And you could be connected to all of these different um, and localize wherever very specific communities or countries you want to help. And uh, yeah, I, and there are also brands that are um, offering the, the digital coupons. Not only that, but, you know, Intu has this ability and for, for whoever is uh, listening to this conversation, we invite everyone to join because what we are doing is creating a, a very, very compatible and universally interoperable platforms, so APIs and uh, SK, uh, SKGs, everything, everything that helps us integrate with other platforms is available right now. We have a couple of examples how Intu will be, um, be will, has become the consumer-facing tool for the Region One Accelerator, which is going to be, you know, um, really helping accelerate and and uh, and uh, uh, propel the the transformation to regenerative the regenerative transformation it's uh, it's a we need to see it with a sense of urgency so we are very proud to be a part of a project and also the consumer facing tool where people so every farmer that is onboarded in the platform and sharing images as they onboard their data to get their regenerative score and all that will automatically have an into story generated. So that'll happen. Um, and that's how into is interacting with other platforms. And also Makina, the, uh, you know, cashback uh, system that's working with purpose driven brands will use into as the story viewing uh, tool when you are dealing with their cashback system. So that's a, uh, all of those are very interesting projects of collaboration where you have into as a platform that is integrated with other platforms facilitating and this uh, solutions like the, to the ones you mentioned where you have cashback or coupons or and then at the same time uh, an engagement story. Amazing. Love it. I'm excited to see where everything goes as this continues to roll out and the platform continues to get developed. And I'm sure, you know, while I can imagine so many possibilities right now, I'm sure people are going to come up with things that I wouldn't have even imagined. So <laughs> it'll be fun to see it evolve and grow over time. Beautiful. Well, thanks for um, taking a little time out of your day to share your story and tell us a little bit about what you're working on. 
much appreciated and and thanks for you know being committed to evolving the world no thanks to you for inv the invitation on for having me here and this opportunity to share with our purpose-driven community um thanks so much thanks for listening if you'd like to learn more about pablo or his company go to look in dot two Subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel for more innovator interviews, expert advice, and leadership discussions. If you like this episode, leave a heart, thumbs up, or review, and share it with your colleagues. As an ever-evolving show, we also love feedback, so send us ideas for who we should talk to next at evolve at modernspecies.com and learn about our new online community for brand leaders at evolvecpg.com. See you next week.